Hello, it's time for a normal video and um, we had the, the very quick video announcing the winner of the competition so uh, congratulations again to Simon. I will be hoping to hear from him soon or I will get in touch to get his details to send him the uh, copies of the 80s Scream Queen set and Luz the Flower of Evil uh, sealed Blu-rays so um, well done. But I did, uh, I had a lot of posts arrived on the same day, so it's getting into um, Halloween horror season, uh, obviously, for a lot of people. Uh, so there are some horrors that I've picked up, there are some other things. Let's, uh, let's just get to it, let's see what I've got. Uh, first of all, from Eureka, so uh, due to the death, I have not seen, I am unaware of it, I don't know what I am in for but it's the I believe it's the same director as a Chinese ghost story I think and um, so I've been getting a few of those from Eureka lately I'm looking forward to you know at some point diving in um, whenever I make time and that should be that should be good it'll go with the other ones that I've picked up from them lately uh, and then I also got Johnny Guitar which I know is a, a bit of a Bit of a classic i think uh, regarded as classic from nicholas ray uh joan crawford in the main role i look forward to that again i know nothing about that so these are uh very very new to me and be interesting as always uh with eureka pretty good uh, packages of extras and um this edition of johnny guitar has the booklet and things in there i've not unsealed them yet i'll do that soon let's put them there uh, I got an indicator uh, arrival and it is the fourth uh, Columbia Noir set. So I've got all four now. Walk a crooked mile, walk east on Beacon, push over, a bullet is waiting, Chicago Syndicate and the Brothers Rico. Again, I don't think I know any of these. Um, I think between the sets then I've got like I've easily got over 20 films that I've not seen before that I will be able to um, mark up on the list if uh, I hopefully make time for film noir November this year, noir November. Um, I'd really like to do that mainly because past couple of times I've delved into noir movies I I've still not made time to revisit the superb Miller's Crossing, uh, which I want to do. So with that and the Columbia Noir sets and the Sam Fuller sets, and there's just a lot that I know I'll tend to enjoy them anyway. So it'll be uh, great. But again, if anyone uh, has any immediate recommendations uh, from those, then let me know. I'm always happy to be steered in the direction of any standouts let's uh put that there what's next a few odd ones death screams um again i have no idea about this one slasher flick as far as i'm aware i'll be checking that out soon the snake girl and the silver haired witch um could be pretty interesting, I hope. Um, I, with Arrow and the sort of the Asian genre cinema, the, the release haven't steered me too badly uh, with those. And then Walk on the Wild Side, which I have no idea if I will like or dislike that. I don't even know what it's about. I'm reading it now. I still don't know um, how that actually came to my attention or if I just saw it with the arrow selection and thought yeah I'm buying a load of titles I'll get that one anyway so um, definitely a mix let's get to the final box sets first of all I think uh, anyone who knows me would know I'll pick up this it will go nicely alongside the uh, the Weird Wisconsin set, the He Came From The Swamp set, the American Horror Story ones, everything else. Uh, I've seen <laughs> The Giant Claw before. Um, if you haven't, you should definitely Google a screen cap 
of the giant claw and watch it. It uh, has a ridiculously um, unbelievable and kind of cute creation in it. The other ones, I don't think I've seen Creature with the Atom Brain uh, or the Werewolf or Zombies of Moratau. Um, and there are some good uh, little booklets and there some essays and art in this set. It's a, it's a nice one. Again, Arrow are doing really well with these films that are, I mean, I would say generally regarded as lesser films, but a lot of the ones that they put their effort into and a lot of the titles that they bring to a wider audience, it's easy for our film fans who are already well aware of them to mock these choices and say, you know, there are so many other films deserving of this treatment and that treatment. But um, they have a knack of responding to films in the way that fans do if they see something made with uh, sort of love and heart and spit and sawdust rather than something that's made with um, no problems getting the financing. Uh, looking to cash in on a trend and then standing the test of time anyway. Uh, I think, you know, at Raiders we've discussed this a few times, mainly around the, the films of Ed Wood. And uh, when we discussed the film of Ed Wood itself, uh, you know, we we certainly respond to that. Uh, I think I speak for us all when I say that. Um, you know, if someone just has good intentions and this earnestness, often comes through uh, even though they don't have the resources that everyone else has uh, they probably don't have the resources to make the film they can see in their head but they will keep hustling and doing whatever they can do to get that done uh, I think that's always a really great thing to uh, celebrate and respond to and that's why I'll always pick up those box sets and even, you know, when I'm uh, we're discussing things on the podcast, when I write reviews on my blog every day, whenever I'm watching films, uh, to a small degree, there is always part of me that is just like, you know, from the first instance for a film, you got your film made. If you've got a film made, you got your film made. And, you know, nobody can take that away from me, whether they love or hate the film. Now, I've seen films, and I've mentioned films uh, here, there and everywhere that feel like they were made with very small amounts of effort and a lack of care and maybe from a place of cynicism. Uh, so I will treat those more harshly than I will treat a, you know, a perceived bad film that is um, sort of made with good intentions and coming from a good place. I think that's a really fine distinction to make between them. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Moving from that box set, though, to another one which has some more polished films in it. I mean, I had to. I just had to. I had the, uh, the old box set. Uh, was it DVD only? With the... Uh, oh, God. I, I knew the word for it not lithographic the the cover the move anyway um and then when i heard arrow were doing this and uh, to children of the corn is um it's not really a great film but it feels like that for a lot of us who caught it on video and uh there was the the, the crazy opening and then it goes quiet for a while and it builds up to um you know, a fun third act with He Who Walks Behind the Rose. The, the second film, The Final Sacrifice, I can't remember enjoying that much. And then you've got the third film, Urban Harvest. Beyond that, you've got a lot. And I think I've seen the whole series up to date, including the just eh, uh, remake. Um, if I remember right... Craig was a big fan of Urban Harvest. It's our two or three that he likes a lot. Uh, so maybe he'll be picking up this box set. I don't know. Maybe you'll be picking up this box set. Uh, let me know. Uh, let me know if you've you've picked it up. If you have any fond memories of it. Um, you know, if it's led you down a path to check out the other 
sequels that have come out over the years to this one again the usual great assortment of extras for this package and um the there are a couple of guys on here i'm not going to name check names because uh i know names that have appeared on some of the other boxes as well and they're all people uh generally that i tend to to really like so it's great for them to uh be associated with that package and do more work that's getting them out there uh, so all i'll say is there are a couple of people in here i really like particularly for their um ability to to dig through uh what i think a lot of people would consider trash and they will find the gems uh they have a podcast they have uh, covered some creature features and are now discussing some erotic fellas that's all i say you can put the clues together and, and search them out um because i'll get told off if i keep uh naming too many other podcasts uh but they're they're really good and let's see people involved in the assets are really good as well but uh I, I respond warmly to these guys for the sort of stuff that they check out that is um my kind of entertainment sometimes where i'm just wanting a an 85 to 90 minute creature feature and i'm willing to put up with the dodgy effects that come from the asylum for example uh, that's the last of the post anyway the uh spaceship special will have dropped today uh so it'll be sort of later or just about now and then october is horror month on the podcast so we are we're doing things a bit differently this year we're picking a year and then we're all picking a movie from that year so we're doing that for two or three weeks and we are covering a big franchise at the end of the month i think the last two months in halloween it's one that i think generally we all have a lot of love for uh, on the podcast and i think a lot of people do so uh i hope you enjoy what we're going to be covering and i hope you know as uh, horror fans i know a lot of people share our a sort of bias towards the horror genre uh so this is always a fun month for a lot of people uh, i hope you enjoy what we cover for the month ahead um that's it have a good weekend and see you next week